I'm sorry it took so long. Goodness gracious, my Mac wasn't working, my phone, nothing. So now I'm just done out here with the iPhone X, my Mac is fixed, so I can finally edit and shoot videos for you guys. This video is going to be about the HPSB scholarship that I received. HPSB stands for Health Profession Scholarship Program. And I'll tell you a little bit about that before I get into the process for applying, um, how long it takes, and a little bit about the finances that go into it. I'm also going to be answering the, the questions that you guys posted on my Instagram, um, so I'll do that last. So first, HPSB, Health Profession Scholarship Program. Now this is a program offered by, I believe, all of the branches except for the Marines, um, so Army, Navy, and the Air Force. Um, it's a program that they offer to certain advanced practice medical fields um, for them to cover your tuition along with, you know, health insurance and things like that. They'll cover that, give you a stipend in exchange for you giving back time to that branch for you. So like I said, they will pay for your tuition. That gets paid directly to your school. Um, they'll pay for your health insurance if it is required by your school. They give you a monthly stipend and you are paid, I think it's about $2,200 um, a month. Uh, you will get reimbursed for certain travel expenses. You're reimbursed for, let's say, books, um, a stethoscope, lab coat, scrubs, and things like that. This would be a very, very long video if I were to go over every single thing that is covered with the HVSB. So I'm just going to talk about general things that are covered, and then I'll also talk about the process, and so this would just be one big blanket video. What is the application process like? Um, let me tell you, this process took me nearly two years. I started applying before I was ever even accepted into CRNA school. Uh, so, I, when I was taking my CCRN and my GRE, I was also, you know, communicating with my recruiter, um, figuring out what I needed to send to him and her, and I had such a process. My process was not easy. I was switching in between recruiters. Um, it was a new recruiter who had never dealt with this health professions um, aspect of recruiting, because there's different types of recruiters. There's recruiters for you know, basic airmen, and then there's recruiters for people with degrees, and then there's recruiters for people with, um, that are going into the health professional field. It's kind of like applying to CRNA school. You are required to submit your resume, um, your background, answer questions, you go through an interview process, and you are put through a selection committee that they have periodically throughout the year, and you are selected that way. The first thing that you need to do is figure out which branch that you would like to enter um, out of the Air Force, um, Navy, and the Army. If we are sp specifically talking about um, CRNA school, the Army also has their own CRNA school out um, as a part of Baylor, I believe. Don't quote me on that. So yeah, you need to figure out which branch that you would like to enter. So then you would do a quick search of recruiters specifically health professions recruiters. Those are the people that can help you specifically if you're in the medical field. After that, you need to get in contact with a recruiter. Me, I'm very, very headstrong. I hate using, you know, automatic emailing stuff. So I looked up the recruiter for my area um, and I found that number and called and called and called and called and called and called until I got an answer back. Um, you guys are probably going to encounter not hearing back from recruiters, not receiving emails, uh, but how bad do you want it is how much effort you're going to have to be putting in to obtain this scholarship. If you are in communication with um, a recruiter, they are going to ask you to send them so much paperwork. You're going to sign so much paperwork. I kid you not, uh, I, I hate paperwork. Health records, your bank records, they ask you for your transcripts, they ask you for your your nursing license they ask you for your certifications your resume um, you have to fill out and answer survey questions and you're pretty much creating a packet for you to submit to the selection committee so everything that they ask you for send it to them and send it to them in a timely manner i did everything within the day if i could find it um, but one of the things that i had trouble with was my medical records i've had about four surgeries in my life um, so you and they were you know back 
whenever years and years ago so some of my medical records were destroyed and I had to get waivers for them or somehow get them to dig them up so that was one of the most difficult parts of my process once you have submitted all of the information that your recruiter has requested from you they have your packet and they submit that to a selection committee. I'm not exactly sure how often the committees are, I don't remember, um, but for each fiscal year, they have about, I think it's like four or five each year um, to where your packet gets submitted and just like, you know, an interview board, they are choosing who they would like to be in the military. Um, I talk about my, my application process and the interview process sometimes on Instagram and some of my YouTube videos and I don't have any special tips and tricks as to how you can get selected for your HPSP scholarship. It all comes down to you just being a person that they would want in their military, um, how you interview, and I'll talk about the interview process in just a second. Before you can interview in person, you actually have a phone interview and you have to pass that one before you get invited to have it in person. I interviewed with um, an officer at an Air Force base here in North Carolina and like I said, I, when I started this process, it was in 2015. I didn't interview until I think 2016 and I did two sets of interviews. You go and you meet somebody, you don't know who it's going to be, they ask you questions, you know, why would you want to be in the military, things like that, you know, show you around. Um, I also asked to shadow a CRNA in the Air Force. Um, so I did that on the same day. Also, on top of the interview process, you have to go to MEPS, um, Military Entrancing, Military Entrance Processing, I believe that's called, I'm not sure, because I've never been in the military, so, you know, acronyms and things like that, I'm not very good at. Um, so you go to that, you, it's pretty much like having an in-depth physical. They want to see if you are physically capable of entering the military. Um, so it's not like you don't do any fitness or anything like that. Um, you know, you just, for women, you know, you have your gyno exams, you have, you know, head to toe, scalp, eyes, hearing, you know, they look over your medical records that you had sent. Um, they test, so for me, you know, they test how you can walk, the duck walk, all this other stuff. You can Google it, you can YouTube it, it's all on there. So for the Air Force, um, I am required to pay back a year for year um, for my scholarship, for whatever I was offered. Now, since I was first, I'll tell you guys a little story, I was not accepted immediately when I first applied. I actually was put on an alternative list. And let me tell you, so I, my first year of school is actually not paid for, um, but my last two years will be. But the minimum required payback time is three years for the Air Force, so I will be giving them three years. Um, I was a little bummed about it, but it's okay. There's other ways for me to, you know, earn money toward paying the first year of my school off. You would get bonuses as a CRNA. Um, you get sign-on bonuses, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, and plus the experience that I'm going to be gaining in the Air Force as a CRNA is going to be second to none. So it's all good with me. Um, can't do everything in life for money. At least that's what I believe. Okay. Um, I am paid a stipend monthly. A lot of you guys ask how am I affording what blah blah blah. Yeah, I'm paid a stipend um, monthly that I can use toward anything. Um, obviously I use it for my food and my house and stuff like that. Right now I'm a reservist and I am a second lieutenant. When I graduate, I will be a captain in the Air Force and receiving that captain pay. Right now, I receive a set stipend from the uh, Air Force, or military, whichever. Um, on top of the stipend, I'm reimbursed for books. Um, I can rent a laptop for $500 a year um, through any company. Um, I can't buy, they won't pay for a new laptop, but they'll reimburse me for a rental. Um, I can have like my lab coats, scrubs, um, stethoscopes, those are all reimbursable items um, that they will pay me back for. I don't have to go on any active duty training, I don't have to go to drill, I don't have to do anything. My main focus is to finish school so that I can serve out my contract for the Air Force once I'm done. Um, let's see. 
So yeah, let me, I'm gonna quickly answer your guys' questions because that's what you guys really, really wanna hear. So I'll answer them as I go. And then I think I'm just gonna make an HPSP series because there's so much information to go over. And with that, I'm going to end this video. I'm going to just do another one and answer your guys' Instagram questions in a separate video because I don't want these to be too long. So stay tuned for that one. Thank you so much for watching.